So how do you play the classic bossa nova guitar rhythm pattern? Well, this is an easy and straightforward lesson on exactly how to do it. By the end of this simple tutorial, you will be able to confidently play this essential rhythm pattern that is the signature sound of bossa nova guitar music. I'm going to teach you the rhythm pattern just with the one chord from that example, along with some step-by-step -step exercises to make it sound rhythmically tight so it really grooves, but of course you'll want to apply it to chord progressions. So here's a quick example of what it sounds like applied to a chord progression. This is the first eight measures of the famous bossa nova song called Corcovado, also titled Quiet Nights of Quiet Stars. <laughs> stick around at the end of the video because I'm going to share with you how to take the next step for after you have this rhythm pattern down, you'll want to find a simple straightforward way to figure out what chord shapes to use when applying this pattern to your favorite bossa nova songs. And if you don't have favorites, no problem, I'm also going to list for you my favorite tunes that I recommend that you start working on once you have the right hand rhythm down. All right, enough setup, let's get you playing this awesome bossa nova guitar rhythm pattern. So the chord we're going to use is B7. This is the root of the chord, this is the third of the chord, and this is the flat seven of the chord. And the fingers I want you to use are fingers two, one, and three. You might be familiar with this chord shape with also this note on the top string second fret included, and that would make it a full chord with one, three, five, and seven, because this would be the five, but we're leaving the five out, and that's actually perfectly fine to leave the five out in chords like this, because it's implied, and you'll see that we're also gonna use it as part of the bass line later. For your right hand, I want you to play with your middle finger on the top string, your index finger on the middle string, and then your thumb on the lowest string. That's uh, indicated with a P in fingerstyle and classical guitar. The P, I, and M for these notes. Now we want to make sure to think of this pattern as two separate parts. We have a bass part and an upper voice part, and we're just going to call it the bass and the chords. Even though these upper voices are just two notes, we're going to call those the chords, just for simplicity of labeling. So you have your bass and your chords. And notice that the down stems are the bass line and the up stems are the chords, or the upper voices. Let's look at the bass first. It's just on beats one and three for the whole pattern. So it's just half notes going indefinitely. If we look at this version that has the alternating bass line, so I have two versions for you. This one has an alternating bass line. We still have it on one and three. Uh, it's just that that note is changing and you can see that it's fret two, fret two on the next string, fret two, fret two, alternating strings. This alternating bass note is the fifth of the chord. Okay, let's look at the upper voices. Let's look at this chords part. This is the actual bossa nova rhythm. Just a reminder, this is the three and the seven of the chord. These are the important tones. These are called the guide tones of the chord. They're very dissonant on, in this dominant seventh chord, but these are the crucial character tones of the chord. The rhythm of this upper part is absolutely crucial for the sound. This is the official rhythm. When it's put against the bass line, uh, we get the, the kind of sound we're going for, but this upper part is the official rhythm. It's tricky because it's syncopated, which means it's rhythmically placed in spots within time that are not obvious. In other words, it is accenting the upbeats or the offbeats or the ands of the beats instead of the normal beats. And it's accenting several of them in a row. So check it out. This is how I want you to think of the way that this rhythm is organized, that will, it will really help. I'm gonna write all the beats in for the timing. Okay, now we can see where everything is lined up in time, whether it's on a beat or an and. So think of this upper part, this official rhythm this way. We have two articulations that are on beats, the one and the two. And then the only other time it's on a beat, we're ignoring the bass right now, the only other time it's on a beat is on the four, okay? So you have two in a row that are on a beat, and this very last one is on a beat. And these four are all off beats, and you can see it lining up with those off beats there. So four off beats in a row. So think of it as two on beats, four off beats in a row, and then another on beat. This syncopation is what makes the bossa nova rhythm pattern feel like it grooves, makes it feel danceable.
If you're not used to playing multiple offbeats in a row, then that this part can throw you off and that's totally fine. I have exercises to get that really locked in. With a little patience, you will totally nail it. So we wanna be able to play each part by itself. And I demonstrated the bass by itself and that's easy because it's just a straight half notes, but we wanna be able to play this upper part by itself as well. To really nail the bossa nova feel and to nail this middle part that's potentially gonna throw us off, we need to make sure that we can feel and play constant off beats, the con constantly playing the ands of a beat. So let's just take these top two notes and play them with a metronome and we're gonna play just the ands of each beat. So it's perfectly in between the metronome clicks. If we can't do this exercise well, then it means that we're kind of guessing where offbeats are and it means our time's gonna get really mushy during these four offbeats in a row and getting those solidly locked exactly where they need to be is crucial for the ultimate feel that we're going for. Once you can play offbeats, here are two exercises to help learn how to feel this bossa nova rhythm pattern really solidly. So we're gonna tap our hands on the fretboard, but you can tap your hands on anything, the body of the guitar, your knees, the, a desk, anything. We're going to tap every eighth note with your right hand tapping the beats and your left hand tapping the off beats like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now we're going to accent the bossa nova rhythm pattern. Remember it's two on beats, two right hands, then four off beats, four left hands in a row, and then one right hand at the end of the two bars and it starts over again. So it's actually gonna feel like three right hands in a row. On, on, off, 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 on, right, right, left, 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 right, one, two, and, 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 four. The second way to practice it is by strumming the guitar with the strings muted. If you're comfortable strumming, this is a great way to practice it. First do a constant strum, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Now we accent the bossa nova rhythm pattern, so it's gonna be down, down, up, 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 down. Down, down, up, 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 down. On, on, off, 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 on. One, two, and, 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 four. Then take the clicks away, but keep the hand moving the same way, just not hitting the strings when you're not accenting. Down, down, up, 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 down. Down, down, up, 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 down. Now try it just plucking the upper voices of that chord. Make sure you're making these staccato notes short by planting your fingers on the string ahead of time to mute the strings where it shows staccato markings in the music. Muting those notes and making them sound shorter is the final ingredient that really brings the pattern to life and it makes it sound like it grooves and bounces a little bit. This part is all about making the groove super tight and locked in time and having complete confidence in where those notes are placed and where the offbeats are placed when we play them. And people will definitely feel the difference if you play it with this sort of precision versus kind of guessing where those offbeats are. Now we can work on combining the two parts. Now that we learned all the details for how to practice this classic guitar rhythm pattern, here are my seven favorite bossa nova tunes that I recommend you start trying it out on. Number one, Corcovado, which I played the chords to at the beginning of the lesson. Number two, Black Orpheus. Number three, Once I Loved. Number four, How Insensitive. Number five, Meditation. Number six, Wave, the chords of which are playing in the background right now. And number seven, the very famous song, The Girl from Ipanema. I did a video on all the chords to this song recently, so check the description for a link to that video if you're interested. So just look up the chords to any of those songs, and then to figure out what chord shapes to play for each chord symbol, I put together a PDF guide based on a method that I've been teaching for years on how to legitimately play any jazz chord in a way that sounds great, but using as few chord shapes as possible, which is actually only eight chord shapes total. That's all you need to play any jazz chord. So conveniently, I got the domain anyjazzchord.com. If you go to anyjazzchord.com um, or just click the link in the description, that'll forward to my website where you can download this PDF guide for free. It shows you how to use the exact chord shapes that I was using in this whole video and how to apply them to any chord progression of any jazz tune or any bossa nova tune. 
I just want that to help you so you can get going playing these beautiful songs as quickly as possible. That's it for this lesson. Let me know what your favorite bossa nova tune is in the comments. Happy practicing, and I'll be back for another lesson next week.